All right, guys, we are here at the Space Symposium in Colorado Springs, and we have some amazing interviews lined up for you already. All of this combined with amazing scenes like this RL-10 engine here from Aerojet Rocketdyne, which is one of the longest-lived and most established engines in the history of space flight. Let me tell you something. In these series of videos, you're going to get some content unlike anything you've seen before. Can't wait to bring it to you, so let's get going. So my name is Crystal Scordo and I'm the Director of Brand and Communication for Astroscale US. And my job is to tell our story, talk about all the services that we're uh, doing across Astroscale. And I'm really excited to, to talk with you about that today. Fantastic. So you know, I, I talk to my viewers a lot about what Europe is doing with LEO cleanup and such, but Astroscale US is into some other types of products. Can we let's go ahead and start with the ones that are more well known? For example, the Lexi, you know, gets featured a lot. Tell us about that. What does the Lexi do? Yeah, so Astroscale US, right? Astroscale as a whole is a global on orbit servicing company with a vision for the safe and sustainable of de development of space. So what we're trying to do is to make safe, sustainable, so future generations can explore and utilize space, right? And so we do that a number of different ways. Astroscale US, two of the really big programs we're focused on right now, like you were saying, is our Lex Lexi spacecraft, right? So Lexi is our life extension spacecraft for the geo orbit. And what this gives us the ability to do is to perform life extension services. So we can safely approach and dock to another satellite in the geo orbit, and we can perform different capabilities like inclination correction. So if our client satellite has moved a little bit and they need a little bit of correction, we can do that. We can use our onboard fuel to station keep. So if the client spacecraft is running out of their own onboard uh, fuel, then we can perform that service for them. If the satellite in GEO is no longer operational and they need to go to graveyard orbit, we can safely move them to graveyard orbit. And so those are just some of the capabilities that our Lexi vehicle is able to do. And the way we do that is by grappling onto the ESPA ring on the GEO satellite. So we're able to use our four docking arms right there to safely approach and dock to the spacecraft, our client spacecraft, and then perform the service that the client needs. So tell me, first of all, you say a lot of people talk about graveyard orbits. Where is a graveyard orbit? Like, where's an example of one? So the graveyard orbit in GEO, that's currently the uh, accepted practice for how to remove a defunct satellite in the GEO orbit. So it's within the GEO orbit, and what you do is you're taking your operational satellite, once it's no longer working, and you're moving it to this destination. In low Earth orbit, when a satellite is no longer operational, what the accepted practice in an industry is to deorbit that spacecraft. So you deorbit it, and then it will burn on entry. Well, in our GEO orbit, we move it to graveyard. Now, what sort of endurance does Lexi have? I mean, chemical thrusters only have, they only last so long, and also there's a bleed off of propellant in orbit, etc. How long can Lexi stay functional? And also, is there a way for you to be able to refuel Lexi to keep it going? Yeah, okay, so a couple of great questions there. So, there is no specific time frame for how long Lexi can stay functional, and that's because it depends on the type of service that we're performing, right? So different services that we offer with our spacecraft require different uses of power and of fuel, and so Lexi is designed uh, to be multi-mission purpose 
but it depends on the type of the mission that will inform the life of the spacecraft. So that's a little bit of a hard answer to give, but they are designed to purpose uh, to serve multiple clients. And then Lexi is refuelable. So what that allows us to do is to take our servicing vehicle to get it to be refueled and then to go support another client activity. And that's really important because we are not asking the client to perform a maneuver. We uh, are going to be doing that on our own as a servicing vehicle. So let's talk about let's talk about some of these other vehicles. All right, what's what's a uh, APSR? What's that vehicle? Yeah, so APSR is a really exciting program for Astroscale. It's the Astroscale Servicer Prototype Refueler, and it's part of a program out of the Space Force. And so the Space Force is looking to enable refueling capabilities to unlock more potential in the geo orbit. And we've been selected to design and deliver this satellite to the Space Force. And what's really unique about this is it will refuel other satellites on orbit, and then it's also capable of being refuelable. So again, the whole benefit of this is that the Space Force asset, their operational satellites in space, won't have to perform any maneuvers to be refueled. We will bring the fuel to them. They don't have to uh, assume any risks by leaving their operational slot to go to get fueled. And so it's a really cutting edge technology. Astroscale is very excited to uh, to be the first company awarded a mission like this. And we're gonna be delivering it to the Space Force by 2026. And a part of Astroscale's success is because we really believe in the ecosystem development of the honor road servicing market. So we have fantastic partners like Swiri, who are building the spacecraft bus for us, Orbit Fab, who are working with to build, yes. right, the ports, the refueling ports that will allow us to refuel and be refueled. So it's a really fantastic story, not only about delivering a new service to the Space Force, but about how the ecosystem is coming together and the market's evolving. That's fantastic. Uh, now on a different, uh, slightly different topic here, I noticed that uh, one of your um, vehicles was deployed by Rocket Lab yeah. um, recently. Um, so it seems a lot of your vehicles are smaller in scale. Do you have a, a launch provider that you prefer working with, or do you try to be as launch provider agnostic as possible? Yeah, you know, it's really mission dependent. So we've been talking a lot about what's happening in the geo orbit, which Astro scale US is really leading. Our Address J mission is for the LEO orbit, and that's being led by our Astroscale Japan entity. And they've uh, selected Rocket Lab to be the launch provider, and that spacecraft is on orbit right now to inspect a second stage rocket body. So it really is a groundbreaking mission because what this satellite is gonna do is gonna safely approach and rendezvous with a rocket body to understand the characteristics of that. How is that rocket moving? What does it look like? How is it tumbling, right? These are things we've not really studied as an industry before because we've not had the technology to enable that. And so JAXA has been really forward leaning in funding this mission and selecting Astroscale to, to do this. And so we are in the middle right now of rendezvous proximity operations to safely approach that rocket body. So how do you guys pull this off? I mean, you guys have positive, you know, great relationships it seems with JAXA, with the UK Space Agency, which I've talked to them extensively about you, Space Force, I mean, everybody. How is it that you established these relationships and get everybody on board? Yeah, well, a part of Nobu Okada, he's our founder, his vision for Astroscale and for really entering into the honor servicing market was to build an ecosystem, right? And he's not been singularly focused as the company has grown and evolved in one area. The approach we've taken to this has been the technology development, which is some of what we've been talking about here, but then also looking at the policy, right? What are the standards, what are the international policies and norms and behaviors we need to enable the responsible use of space? And then what's the economic business case to make this a viable market, right? And so that approach has led to the sustainable scaling and growth of Astroscale to this point. So Astroscale US is just one of the entities, right? So I represent that team, but we also have offices in the UK. We have an office in France that we just opened recently. And then a subsidiary of Astroscale US is uh, an office in Tel Aviv, so Astroscale Israel. And then also sitting in Japan is our headquarters. So global footprint, we're almost at 600 employees. We continue to grow. Uh, in Astroscale US, we're over 80 employees. 
And a part of our success is because we're all grounded in the same mission and vision, right? We all believe in what we're doing. We're all focused on making space sustainable because we want there to be a space for us to continue to explore. Last question. What are, if you have upcoming, a lot of upcoming missions, uh, Cosmic, for example, here, that sort of thing. What are you the most excited about on the horizon? You know, what do you see Astrocade Scale doing towards the end of the decade that you're really excited about? What makes me most excited is when we don't have to have these conversations anymore because it's so routine and this is just a normal part of space operations, right? That's where I see the industry going and that's what makes me the most excited. And I'm just so honored to be a part of the Astroscale team that's getting to make this happen uh, and just being a part of this ecosystem. I've been at Astroscale for three years now and the conversations have shifted from Oh, what is on orbit servicing? What is Astroscale due to? What's your latest mission? What do you have on orbit right now? And that makes me really proud. There, there's change happening. Industry is noticing, uh, and that's really exciting. And so it should. It should yeah, make it, it should. yeah, definitely. Well, let me tell you, given that you're still a relatively small company, your worldwide success and also all the innovation that you're embracing, Thank very you. impressive. It's been a pleasure following the progress of your company. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you for your time and for bringing this important conversation to your audience. Guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much for all of the support that got me to Space Symposium in the first place. This has been an experience unlike any other. I've learned so much about all of the amazing things happening in the world of space flight that we are going to be seeing in the news, the everyday news for the next several years and it's all happening for the first time here getting the first information about these exciting developments i hope you guys have enjoyed this series of videos so until next time stay angry about space